Welcome to day two of Painting the Wilderness Seascapes. In today's tutorial, we are going to paint a misty lake where using mostly just one color, we're going to try to capture some of the ethereal effect of fog kind of floating on top of a lake with a forest off in the distance. So this is another tutorial where we're gonna make a big mess. We're going to start with wet on wet layers first and then slowly build up detail and slowly build up contrast. And by being patient with yourself and telling yourself constantly, it's okay that this is messy, it's supposed to be messy, it's okay that this is messy, it's supposed to be messy, you're gonna get through this. And regardless of whether you end up, you know, liking your final product or not, I really hope you learn a lot along the way and build up some courage because that's really the main idea behind painting and art, right? It's not about creating a final masterpiece necessarily. It's about celebrating your life and celebrating your, ca your capabilities for discovery and for curiosity. And I'm just so excited to be on this journey with you. So without further ado, let's dive into day two. All right, here we go. Day two, we are painting a misty lake and there's day one, sparkling waves, so much fun. For our project today, we are going to use mostly a monochrome scheme. So I'm mostly using Payne's Gray. I think at one point I do use Prussian Blue just to add a little bit of blue into it, but you didn't. I don't really need it, although I just do want to mention that. This project is a practice in values. Val value of a color is the lightness and or darkness of a color. So this project is a practice in values and it's a practice in contrast. So we're going to slowly, similar to the last one, we're going to slowly build contrast in order to create a moody, misty lake. First things first, um, you know, put uh, get your whole paper wet, and we're going to start with a few layers of the wet on wet technique. So I'm mostly using Payne's Gray for this project, and I'm starting off very light. Remember, one of the rules that is helpful is to start off lighter than you think you will need to. So I am using very very watery Payne's Gray just to paint. I'm just kind of like blocking out the bottom part of the lake. I want, you know, that kind of bottom corner to be a little bit shadowy. And then I want some areas kind of in the middle off to the side to be a little bit highlighted. And I want the sky to be fairly light, right? I don't want the sky to be really blue because I want the kind of the light background to contrast against the mountain and the trees that we're going to paint off into the distance. So this very first layer is super subtle, super loose, and it's just kind of basically giving us an outline almost, right? Like we're kind of blocking where we expect the rest of the painting to go. So uh, I'm just kind of putting some more shadows off to the side and in the corner like that. And then as you can see, kind of like where the sky is, the lake is going to take up the bottom two thirds of the page and then the sky with the mountains and the trees in the sky, like in that layer, are going to take up the top one third of the page. And so that's kind of where I am blocking all of this. Again, this is the very first layer, so light, so subtle. We're not really even going to see very much of this because we're gonna keep painting on top of it. But, you know, it's helpful to start off slow and patient and with very light colors. So. After I painted that first layer, I let it dry all the way, and then I re-wet completely with clean water. Now I'm getting to work on the base layers for the mountain. Uh, I re-wet the sky, I actually re-wet the whole thing, but I re-wet the sky, and then I used a slightly darker value, Payne's Gray, to kind of start blocking out where I want the mountain to be. So this mountain is gonna be in the background. There will be layers of trees on top of this mountain. And that's why we're painting it wet on wet still. 
Now, one thing to keep in mind as you're painting this mountain is we want a line of mist between the lake and the mountain and the trees. So in order to kind of keep that line of mist, we need to have it in our minds from the very beginning because we want to use the white space of the paper or at least the lighter spaces of the paper to kind of act as that white mist. We're also gonna paint a little bit on top of it there, but that's why I'm going to be periodically uh, you know, painting in using a thirsty brush, which is a clean brush that is damp, using a thirsty brush to kind of lift pigment away from that line that separates where the mountain is with where the lake is. So I have a very, very misty kind of mountain in the background. It's with the wet on wet technique, meaning I want it to be blurry. That was on purpose. Then I re-wet the bottom of the lake. It was already wet, but I re-wet because it kind of dried. And now I'm just blocking in even more of the shadows. Basically, you know, I want kind of a very loose, organic kind of, you know, I want the middle of the lake. I was trying to say loose organic shape. I want the middle of the lake to be highlighted. So I don't want it. I want the middle of the lake to be kind of the lightest part. Um, and then I want the sides to be a little bit darker. And so as we keep painting this, that's something I'm gonna keep in mind. But I don't want that middle, that shape in the middle of the lake to be a very recognizable shape necessarily. I want it to look natural, right? I want it to look like there are waves. I want it to look like it's just kind of loose and wild, right? And that's where leaning into your own imperfection as an artist is going to serve you well. Because with the wet on wet technique, we're not trying to build specific shapes. I'm just kind of putting down strokes, putting down, slowly putting down darker and darker paint. It's still not like full pigmented quite yet, but slowly putting down darker and darker paint, maybe occasionally, you know, putting a couple thin lines across the middle because I don't want the whole middle to be just white space. I want it to look natural. I want the shadows to look natural. But the idea is the middle should be the lightest and then the sides of the lake should be the darkest because they're in shadow. So as I'm painting this, obviously I've sped this up a little bit. Um, you know, I keep using a thirsty brush to keep that line across, that line that separates the sky from the lake, mostly white space. And then I also, um, you know, just kind of painted a little bit more uh, in the sky. Then I let it dry and I re-wet. And as soon as I re-wet, some of the definition that I had created kind of disappeared um, just because, you know, sometimes that happens. Even though watercolor stays, sometimes when you re-wet, it does get a little bit more you know, a little bit more blurry. Sometimes it does reactivate. So I re-wet the lake and I'm basically doing the same thing, except I decided to add a little bit of Prussian blue. That was entirely, it's entirely optional. I didn't need to, but I did because I wanted this, I wanted it to look a little bit more blue and not just, you know, that kind of navy gray color that Payne's gray is. And that, it was kind of a last minute decision, but I'm basically, like I said, doing the same thing as before, which is I'm laying down paint, then I'm using my thirsty brush to kind of, you know, lift the paint to create highlights. And sometimes I'm, you know, maybe painting a few stripes in the middle of where the highlights are. Then maybe I'm lifting a, few, um, a little bit of the paint. It's important to note that this whole process where I'm adding layers and removing layers and adding more layers and removing layers. That whole process took me about 20 minutes. And so it was, it was fairly slow. Like it wasn't, I sped it up obviously this time. And it, it's because it was a lot of me kind of painting intuitively. So I let that dry completely. And then I used a very, very light value uh, Payne's Gray to paint that mountain off in the distance there. So you can barely see it. And that's because we want it to be far away, right? And so if you want something to look far away, the farther in the distance it is, the lighter the value should be. I let that mountain dry all the way and now I'm painting layers of trees. Notice that I'm not painting individual trees. These trees that I'm painting right now, I'm really just kind of using the footprint of my size two brush in order to paint kind of vertical kind of shapes in the background. 
and then I'm letting it dry and I'm doing another layer of, of those kind of, you know, footprint of my size two brush. And this is because when you paint, especially when you're painting landscapes, it's really intimidating to think you always have to paint exactly what something is. But if you think about it more like I'm, you're painting what you see, right? When you look at trees in the distance, you can't always tell that they're trees. They kind of do just look like blobs. So that's kind of where we're going with this, right? You don't have to paint something exactly as it is. You can kind of just paint it. You can just kind of paint the general idea of it and that will be just fine. That's enough. So with these trees, we're starting light and then we're gradually getting darker. We're starting light and small and gradually getting darker and bigger. And notice that the trees aren't in like a very straight line, right? Um, I do want them to look a little bit scattered. Uh, and this last clump of trees, I am painting individual trees, right? I'm painting the trunks and then I'm painting kind of blobs on either side, but these trees are still quite far away. So they don't have to be, they don't have to be perfect. They don't have to be even, you know, it's okay to paint them in, in clusters. It's okay to paint them in clumps. And actually I think that looks even more realistic. Uh, one thing I also did is on the far right, that line of trees there, they kind of get smaller as if, you know, you can see more of a distance there. Like if there's, I don't know, like the tree line is kind of curving away from us. That's kind of the idea there where some of the trees are getting smaller in that kind of right hand corner. And then the last thing we're going to do for the trees is to create some kind of texture. Maybe it's shadow, maybe it's, I don't know, like texture on the ground. We're using the dry brush technique, meaning I'm using my size two brush. I'm using it so it's damp or even mostly dry so that when I take just a tiny bit of paint and I gently brush it against the, the you know, maybe it's snow right there, then it's kind of, it kind of looks scratchy. So I just painted that dry brush right under those trees and then I re-wet the lake. So now we're gonna focus back on the lake. We're done with the trees and the mountains in the background. We're gonna focus on the lake and I just added even more shadow. So I added, I re-wet, I added even more shadow with even darker Payne's gray, just along kind of the bottom corners. And then while the lake is still relatively wet, th at this point, I don't want it to be like soaking, but I do want it to be at least kind of damp. I'm using a filbert brush here. And I'm with my filbert brush, I am painting vertical strokes underneath the trees. So this is like the reflection of the trees in the water. I'm painting vertical strokes to add some texture of the direction. And also, you know, sometimes reflections aren't mirrors, right? Sometimes when you look at the reflection of things in water, it's not exactly like a mirror. And so that's kind of what we're doing here is it's not an exact reflection, but we're just painting the general shape of, you know, kind of a loose, a loose reflection of those trees in the lake by painting those vertical stripes underneath with a filbert brush um, with the wet on wet technique. And then the final thing we're going to do is we're gonna let that lake dry completely. And now we're going to do wet on dry strokes on top. So the key for this is these wet on dry strokes are not going to be super dark. You need them to be you know, slightly darker than uh, some of the colors you were using but you don't want it to be so dark that they look like very stark lines, right? When you're doing glazing like this, glazing meaning you're painting on top of an already painted layer of, of paint, um, the, the more transparent it is, the more, you know, kind of subtle those details are. And so we're just doing horizontal strokes back and forth, um, making sure to leave space in between so that we're not like covering it completely, but we are doing these kind of horizontal strokes in loose zigzags a little bit all over to just look like gentle waves in the lake. Because again, this lake isn't glass, this lake isn't, isn't you know, like perfectly still. There are, there are little waves, there are going to be little pockets of shadow. And by adding these waves right on top, right, we've slowly been building these layers. These, we started with wet on wet, 
and we did several wet on wet layers to build the shadow. And then we painted those vertical reflections. And then by pairing the vertical reflections with the horizontal glazed layers, the horizontal waves, we have this really complex lake scene, right? And that's really it. That's all we're doing for this lake scene. I think that I think that it turned out really cool and really beautiful and kind of moody. And, you know, if, if color is more your scene, then this project is a great way to kind of stretch, stretch what, what you like to paint. And maybe you come out of it thinking, nah, I really do like color, but maybe you come out of it thinking, wow, there's a lot you can do with just one color. It's one of the reasons why I love Payne's Gray because I think it's so versatile. You can get it so dark so that it looks almost black, but you can also get it quite light. And by combining those, you know, by contrasting light against dark, slowly, that was the key with this project, right? Is like, we used lots of layers. We had lots of drying time and we slowly built up the contrast by starting very, very light and then gradually getting darker so that we left little pockets of white space all around to highlight this kind of dark and moody atmosphere that we're creating here. So this was day two of painting the wilderness seascapes and we painted a misty lake. And now let's think about what we loved and what we learned. So this is one of my very favorite things to do after pretty much everything that I paint, but particularly for this challenge, you know, I want, I always want you to think about something that brought you joy because painting is about those tiny moments of wonder, right? That really is what it's for. So you can take these tiny, tiny pockets of discovery, these tiny moments of wonder with you whenever you need something, whenever you feel like, you know, you need to remember something that brought you joy in your life. Art can do that for you. So that's kind of the point of loved, right? Is thinking about how was this experience something? What What is something that happened in this experience that was like a tiny moment of wonder for me? I really, really loved painting the subtle reflections, the, the vertical like stripes with the filbert brush. I really loved doing that. That was really fun for me. I also really enjoy the contrast between light and dark here. There are only a few spots where it's light, right? Dark is kind of overtaking it or even midtones are kind of overtaking the scene, but the few pockets of light really do kind of help increase that moodiness. So I loved that. And I also loved the simple strokes um, for the texture in the ocean. And then something that I learned or, you know, things that were reinforced is that contrast, even if it's subtle contrast, like it doesn't need to be bold, but subtle contrast builds interest. Contrast, not just colors, but also contrasting shapes. Um, I also, you know, remembered keep, reserve your white space and paint what you see, not what you know. So those are some things that helped me in this project. And it was so much fun. I hope you loved painting with me and I will see you for day three coming soon.